Japanese style garlic fried rice. This one is buttery and very special because I have a little secret ingredient that you would never guess. This is my Japanese garlic fried rice. So this is unlike any other fried rice that I've done on my channel and I do a lot of fried rice as you guys know but typically mainly Thai style and Chinese style fried rice. This is a Japanese style and I have a very odd but very well pretty much like game changing ingredient here that I'm going to be using a little bit later on. We'll get to that part in a minute. First up though, so important here how do we cook the perfect Japanese rice? And for me, because I didn't grow up eating Japanese rice or cooking Japanese rice, I grew up eating and cooking Thai jasmine rice. You know, I've had to work on perfecting my skills at making Japanese rice. So I'm gonna share all those little tips and tricks with you guys so you don't have to go through the pain that I did of all the bad Japanese rice that I cooked. All right, so let's start off with the pre-preparation to the rice. Now, I've had this Japanese short grain rice soaking in some water for about 30 minutes. Oh, before I did that, I washed the rice. So I washed the rice under the tap, then I poured some extra water on top and I've had it soaking. That's really important. I skipped that step once and it did not go well. The rice grains were totally unevenly cooked and everything just didn't work out. Soak the rice. Now, you wanna drain the rice. Now you wanna keep shaking and just kind of agitating that sieve until you stop getting any drips of water down the bottom. This just means that you've got control over the amount of water that you're adding to the rice in the pot. So you'd be surprised at how much water comes out from this little jigging about. Now, transfer that rice into a pot. Now we wanna add some water. And how much water do we add? Well, this is where it gets a little bit confusing, I think. So rice itself only needs an equal amount of water to cook. But of course, rice isn't cooking in a vacuum and some of that water is evaporating off. So you only need just a little bit extra. So this is like two cups of rice, two cups of water and just a quarter cup of water extra. So if you're going to be doubling the quantity of rice, you still only need four cups of rice, four cups of water and a quarter cup. You don't double that extra quarter cup. Doesn't matter how much rice you're doing, just an extra quarter cup is all you need. Trust me. <laughs> all right, so add in the water. Turn the heat on, put the lid on. Tight fitting lid is essential here. And then once you can hear the pot bubbling, that's when you wanna start your timer. So just wait a few minutes here. So I can hear that my pot has started bubbling away in there. So I really don't want to open the lid off and let all the heat out. So I'm just going to have a quick look just to show you guys. Okay, yep, it's boiling. Now I'm going to turn the heat down. So about a medium low heat because I don't want the rice on the bottom to burn. Now start your timer, 10 minutes. So at this point, our rice should be cooked and dry. Let's have a look. Again, I don't want to lift the lid up. And if you're at home, what I would suggest is not lifting it, but I'm just going to show you guys really quickly water I can't see any water so that's good what I'm going to do is actually take this off the heat now but leave the lid on and I want to leave that for another 10 minutes because the steam that's trapped inside there is going to continue kind of evenly and gently cooking the rice all the way through that's right my friends a little bit of patience is needed okay so now we should be looking at some seriously perfectly cooked rice fingers crossed now look at that looks beautifully dry and then I've got a little large wooden spoon here that I'm going to use to fluff this up. Beautifully fluffy, not soggy at all. Just right, let me just try. Mm. Just really nice tender grains, not mushy, great. Okay, now I've made too much rice here, which is generally what I do. I, I do that even with my Thai rice because I like to have two days or three days worth of rice in my fridge always. It's an Asian thing, I think. Um, okay, so I just want about three cupfuls of rice here. Now, while the rice is still warm, this is when I'm gonna add my little secret ingredient. So while I was looking online for the perfect Japanese fried rice, I always like to do some research before I get in front of the camera for you guys. Um, and I came across a blog called Chopstick Chronicles and she had the most amazing addition, which I just think is genius, and that is 
add some mayonnaise. So I've got some Kewpie mayonnaise, which is Japanese mayonnaise, and I love this stuff. So I was like, yes, need to try this out. And I did, and it was fabulous. So that's why we're doing it today. So add your mayonnaise into the rice. You don't even notice the mayonnaise flavor at the end. It just kind of adds an extra like savory, slightly tangy, slightly sweet kind of flavor. It's really good. And now just mix that through the warm rice. To me, it's got to be that Japanese style Kewpie mayonnaise because you don't want a really sweet, you know, kind of mayonnaise in here. Unless you like a sweet fried rice, but it's not for me. Now you can see just how fluffy and lovely that rice is when I'm mixing that mayonnaise through. Mm, perfect. All right, so now we are beautifully prepared. Uh, and actually the preparation takes a lot longer than the actual cooking time. Okay, so before we get into the pan, we're gonna just crack our eggs. And now I think I did mention at the beginning of this video that this is a really buttery, garlicky kind of fried rice. So of course we need some butter. Just as that butter is foaming, I'm gonna add in my garlic. Mm, I love that smell. The smell of buttery garlic really is one of those joyful things. Now, I don't want the heat up too high here, guys. I really just want that garlic to soften. I don't want the butter to color too much. Just when we get a nice, gentle, foaming sizzle, I'm gonna add in my rice. Quick toss around. Now I'm going to add in my soy sauce. Now keep mixing that through until you've got an even coloured palette of rice grains. Now push everything to the side and let's do our eggs. Now I'm using a non-stick pan here so I don't have to add any extra butter or oil but you might need to if you're not using a non-stick. I just like to move the egg around a little bit and then spread it out and then kind of roughly sort of scrape and flip it over. Now just break that egg up and toss it through. a little bit of greenery and some flavor. I'm going to add in some parsley. And now let me check for some seasoning here. Mmm. Mmm buttery, garlicky rice. Oh, that is so good. And that little tiny touch of mayonnaise, mmm, it just gives it an extra something. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt though, because even though we added the soy sauce, we didn't add very much, and I don't wanna kind of darken the color anymore, but I do want a little bit more seasoning. Now that is looking great. Now this makes the perfect friends with things like teriyaki chicken, teriyaki salmon, grilled prawns, just about anything really. And look at how beautifully separate and fluffy those rice grains are. Oh, wow, amazing. steaming bowl of fried rice. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not Thai fried rice, which I grew up eating, but wow. Mmm. Mmm. It's just something about a beautiful steaming bowl of fried rice that gets me every time. Mmm. And there's butter. Butter makes everything better. And mayonnaise. You've got to try the mayonnaise thing, guys. It's so good. It's almost like the mayonnaise coats each of the grains in just a slight amount of flavor. Kind of helps keep them all separate too. Mm. 
Thank you, Chopstick Chronicles. Such a great little tip. Mm, yum. Super easy miso ramen broth with a porky buttered corn topping. Ah, this is one ramen noodle bowl you need to know how to make. Okay, so traditional ramen broth, it's gonna take a very long time. We are gonna make a very quick shortcut version that you might wanna make for a midweek meal or something where you want the ramen, but you can't afford to wait. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a miso tare, and this is like a flavoring or a seasoning that we're gonna put into our chicken stock a little bit later. I wanna start off with a little bit of mirin. So that's a sweet Japanese cooking wine. I'm gonna add some ginger and some garlic. Now when I can see that mirin bubbling away, I'm gonna pull it off the heat and now I'm gonna dissolve in there my miso paste. So this guy can be a little tricky to dissolve. It kind of wants to clump up. So I find the easiest way is to put it into a ladle with a little bit of that hot liquid and just move it around and dissolve it in the ladle, tipping it out into the sauce as you go. Okay, so this is gonna season our broth a little bit later on. Before we get to that part, I'm gonna make all the toppings that we need. So the first one I wanna make is a pork topping. So just want a little bit of oil. I'm gonna add in some garlic. And then some pork mince. I just spread that pork out and stir fry it until it's almost cooked. Now you want to add in some soy sauce and I just like to let that simmer away until that soy sauce has been soaked up by all the pork and everything is like all salty and porky and there's not much liquid left in the pan. Okay, so you can see that most of that liquid is gone now. And trust me, that pork is really beautifully mm, savoury and salty, yum. So I'm just going to transfer that into a bowl and I'm gonna cook my corn in the same pan because, you know, it's the weeknight and I wanna get things done quickly without too much washing up. So the next thing on our agenda is some buttery sweet corn. And for that, we need to start off with some butter, obviously. And some corn. I'm just using frozen corn kernels because I've always got them in the freezer. And cooking the corn in the same pan means it kind of picks up some of that porky juiciness from before. And you want a little bit of salt on there as well. Now just when that corn is heated through and all nice and buttery, then we can just take it off for later. So now we're ready to cook our noodles. All right, only one way to check out if these are ready. Mm, just perfect. Now you just want to wrangle your noodles out of there. Straight into a large bowl. Now we just want to finish off the broth. So I've got some warm chicken stock here. I'm just using a packet one because no, we're taking shortcuts this time around. If you've got a homemade one, obviously use that. I'm gonna pour in that miso mixture we made earlier. And let's just try this and see if we need any extra seasoning here. Mm. That is definitely a great way to doctor up a store-bought stock. That miso hides all manner of sins. We've got that beautiful ginger and garlic coming through and a little bit of sweetness from that mirin. Mm, just great. So a generous helping of this over our noodles. And now we load this guy up with all our toppings. So some of that pork. and the sweet buttery corn. 
some shredded cabbage just because I like the extra freshness and the crunch. And then I've got some very special soy sauce marinated eggs here. If you want to know how to make these guys, I've got a video on my YouTube channel on how to cook the perfect soy sauce or ramen egg. And just a little sprinkle of sesame seeds on top of that pork. So there you go guys, a little cheats version of some buttered corn and pork ramen noodle soup. Of course, I'll test it out for you guys because, you know, you've got to make sure you're getting the goods. Mmm, the butter and the corn and the pork, that is a killer combination. Mmm, yum. Mmm, salty pork kind of like permeates everything and the butter too. Mmm, so glad that ramen bowls seem to be so big. Never have a problem polishing off one of these. <laughs> savory chicken curry with a sauce that's so beautifully spiced. This is my version of Japanese chicken curry. This has got to be one of the most comforting curry dishes you can make at home. And I'm gonna show you how we can make the whole thing from scratch. And it really doesn't need a lot of complicated ingredients. You'd be surprised. Let's start off by making a roux. Now this is gonna be a spiced roux. This is what you would normally buy in those little cubes from the supermarket, those Japanese curry cubes. I'm gonna do it from scratch. So I want some butter first. And just wait for that to melt. Add in some flour, mix that until we get it all nicely incorporated. And I want to keep cooking and stirring this butter flour mixture until I get a, a little bit darker than blonde kind of color. Okay, so just a couple of minutes here and we've got the right color. I'm going to add in some curry powder. Now I'm using some Japanese curry powder. That to me gives the best flavor but you could use any regular curry powder you have at home as well. And then also some garam masala. Okay, let's mix those spices through. And by now, everything should be smelling amazing. And just empty that out, save it for later. And now the curry itself. I just want a little bit of oil to start off with and some aromatics to get everything going some garlic and some onion and as always when I'm using onion as like the base layer of something I'm going to add a little bit of salt and that's going to help to draw out the moisture make the onions sweet and tender now just give these onions a couple of minutes to sizzle away now I'm going to add that spiced roux that we made In goes my chicken. So I'm using chicken thigh, or you could use chicken breast if you want to as well. And now come the ingredients that will give our curry its special character. A little bit of soy sauce first, and some honey. apple cider vinegar today because I'm going to be using apple juice to flavor this as well but you could use regular vinegar as well and the apple juice and you could experiment with different juices here I've done a peach juice that was really nice finally some chicken stock For the vegetables I'm going with a mix of carrot and potato for this one Now all we have to do is be very patient and wait. So bring this up to a gentle simmer, then turn the heat down and cook it with the lid off so it gets a chance to thicken up until those potatoes and the carrot are really soft and tender. About 45 minutes. Now this has my kitchen smelling so amazing. Let's have a look. Oh, it's 
so thick and deliciously rich with all those spices. Mm. I love how you get this balance of spices, a little bit of heat, some of that fruit flavor as well. Mm. So good. I am going to add a little bit of chili powder. This is totally optional and you can add as much or as little as you like. And then just a little dash of salt as well. I like to add a little bit of pickled ginger here as well. And there you go, such a comforting dish to make at home and pretty easy as well, as long as you're a little patient, which I am when it comes to good food. Mm. Perfect. 